we are. Uh, welcome. Episode 91 of the U Shaped Business. I'm forgetting the name of our show. The U Shaped <laughs> Business Show with Georgie and Patty. I'm Georgie. Yeah, and I'm Patty. Hello. <laughs> and we are very excited today because we're kind of going to do a, a year in review where we're going next, things we kind of learned. Um, yeah. And and like I say, a little shorter show, but hey. Here we go. Here we go. I, will, I, uh, I shall uh, share my screen. There. Yay, year end review. Exactly. Well, we think it's cool. We, think it's cool. we are introspective kinds of people who, who think that reviewing is a very, very, very good idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, welcome to uh, Building a U-Shaped Business. And we do this, by the way, in case you haven't um, uh, tuned into us before. We do this every Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time uh, at this link on this channel, broadcasting live to Facebook. Uh, and I, normally this is where I would say we do this every week, except we will not be doing this next week or the week after because we're taking a break for the holidays, but we will be back in January. And what we do here is we talk about building a successful business based on on um, your purpose, your values, and your personality. It's the U-shaped business. It's doing what you want to do with the people you want to uh, do it with uh, and doing it your way. And uh, today uh, is episode 91. Woo! <laughs> uh, woo! So what we're going to do is a little bit of a year-end review. We're going to talk in, in particular, um, Georgie and I are going to talk a little bit about what happened for us uh, during 90 episodes of this particular show, uh, you know, kind of the highlights as we see them, and also give you a little glimpse into what's coming up next year, uh, because one of the things, you know, you do a review, you check and see what worked, what didn't work, what you like, where your energy flows, um, and uh, it gives you really good information for deciding what's what's happening next. So we're going to do kind of both sides of those. If uh, if you're here with us live, either on Facebook or on the Zoom, uh, feel free to uh, to play along, uh, to share any kind of review insights that you might have uh, for your own business um, or any. Um, you know, from our perspective, is there anything that stood out on the show that uh, was the most memorable or impactful? We'd like to know what that is. Um, and there we go. And uh, Georgie, I'll let you speak to the quote of the day. <laughs> All right. So our quote of the day is never let your memories be greater than your dreams. And I think as we're as often we get to the end of the year, we start looking back and reflecting on everything. And it's easy for us to kind of live in the past a lot and remember that thing that we once did that was so great. And we keep just remembering that, remembering that and almost, almost staking our identity on this thing from the, from the past that we did. And I actually heard this quote this morning and I was like, man, this is actually really, really awesome. Because when we talk about building, you know, a U-shaped business that supports the life that you really, really want, I think it's really important to kind of always be tapped into to those dreams and learning and growing and moving forward towards the things that you really want and just being aware of if you're kind of just stuck in the past and in your memories all the time and almost stagnating a little bit. So that's what I got out of this quote um, this morning, just a good little reminder for keeping things fresh. This is... Um... It's a great reminder and uh, you know I find myself in this space sometimes of, of thinking that my best years are behind me. Um, yes. I don't know if anyone else can can relate to that but it, it's kind of getting to, to a certain age where it's like hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> and well over the hill and past my prime and what's coming up next right like um so i think that this is a this is a really good quote for entering into the new year and it's like okay what's next what's what's the dream and what's and what is that about too right like mm -hmm. I think our definition of what success looks like uh, can change over the years as well. Um, and I think you actually have stuff to say about that. Um, in this. <laughs> so, so here we go. Um, as I was thinking about this, I'm like, huh, you know, we've recorded 90, 90 of these uh, 
um, episodes and it's it's a little bit like uh, this year end review when we look at the show is a little bit like huh, what were our greatest hits right uh, like you know if we were a rock band <laughs> and I, I think we would be like a totally like the Georgie and Patty rock band like I, 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 that that could uh, that could totally work right <laughs> um, is when you think about your greatest hits. Uh, when you think about, uh, you know, musicians and that, I think in some cases, the um, the songs or the albums that the musician might think were the best might be a little bit different from what the general public really liked. <laughs> um, so this is greatest hits from the interior perspective. It's kind of like we look back and we each picked three ideas or themes or shows that we hit on where we feel like wow um, these are the ones that we feel are the most important might not be the ones that um, other people have um, kind of grabbed onto but this is a introspective kind of a review so um, that's what we'd like to share with you this morning and uh, these are mine uh, of all the shows that we have done this past year uh, the three concepts that that I shared and that I really grabbed onto and want to build on next year are um, episode 26, <laughs> uh, where we talked about models and metaphors, about using visuals to explain ideas. I think that this is a thing. Um, this is my kind of uh, view of the future is that we hear a lot of chatter about how people don't want to read and how people have um, really short attention spans. And at the same time, ideas are more complicated and more complex to try to explain. And I think that uh, the solution in the intersection of those two things is to get really a whole lot better at using pictures and usually using metaphors as kind of the shorthand, uh, a faster way, like when they say, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, that kind of thing. I think that this is going to be the future of um, marketing and education is about combining um, uh, more kind of visual stuff along with the explanation. I think the explanation, it, it's not enough just to create little itty bitty bits and bites of stuff. It's, you know, a lot of people's ideas, snack size content doesn't say anything. I think we want to look for what's a short form that says a lot. Uh, so I'm really, um, I'm really headed down this path in the new year about doing a lot more of this. Um, using little diagrams, using little pictures, using metaphors and things like that to visually sketch out what an, what an idea is so that people can grasp it um, further. And what's really interesting for me is like on this learning and growth path is what I said in episode 26. <laughs> it's like the very first few ideas I have about how this might, might work. And um, even since then, it's evolved a fair bit. Uh, second one is this idea of future clients, uh, and this is something that resonates not just um, with with us, uh, but with our with our clients. Is thinking about people as people, uh, leaving aside ideas like um, target market and avatar and ways of um, dehumanizing people and turning them into numbers and objects and um, kind of vague descriptions of, you know, marketing to somebody who doesn't actually exist and instead looking at it as, as future clients that they are people and that they will work with us and that the most important things that we need to know about them are things like what are their values? Are they going to resonate with us? And what is it that they're looking for? And there's this idea you know, that we often talk about is that our clients have a problem that we can help them solve. Um, you, you know, like that's, you know, that's the powerful part of your marketing is be able to know uh, what it is that they're looking for, what the problem looks like from their perspective. Um, and that there's an iceberg, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but there's the problems they're aware of, and then below the waterline, there's the problems they're not aware of. Um, this is a really important concept. Um, to grasp when you're thinking about putting your marketing messaging together. It's like, who are your people? and What do they want? What do they need? Um, where are they now? Uh, and it's, if anything is going to change your marketing, it's getting inside the heads of the people who are going to buy from you. 
um, when you can speak to what is on their mind, uh, your marketing be way more effective. Um, and third thing, uh, third episode idea, which Georgie and I have turned this into really the heart of what we do, is this idea of you need to build a bridge between what your clients want um, and what you provide. Because it's not always obvious when you're in an expert kind of a business, if you're doing advising, if you're doing coaching or consulting, where what you're really selling is change, um, helping your client become um, a better version of themselves or to develop a better version of their company. Uh, you need to build a bridge between what they're looking for and what you offer because it's non-obvious. Um, I think that that's one of the most important insights um, you know, that I've brought up in this, uh, um, in this journey of sharing content. Uh, with everyone on this show. So uh, those are uh, my uh, <laughs> my selections for greatest hits. <laughs> and uh, Georgie. Here are mine. So number one, shocking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the power of purpose, which is really about, you know, your why, your purpose, your values, those, that thing that, that I think you were, you um, you were born with this thing and you, it's the thing you are here on the planet to do. And when it is clearly defined and you can clearly articulate it, um, it really does become that North star and that lighthouse. Um, and it helps guide you really in everything that you do. And I think when you're, you can articulate your values and you have them as actions and you know, they, you actually use them for what they're intended to do. It is so incredibly powerful with moving you forward to to what it is that you really want and you know the impact that you want to make in the world and i had to laugh because as you'll see all of the episodes i chose are kind of at the end of the year and uh it, you know it, it's almost a reminder of it's like yes this is actually what i'm all about this is really the things that i think are most important and i tend to wander a little bit and it always seems to come back to, to these three things. And um, I, I just, I really do believe in the power of your why and being able to help people figure out what that is and use it effectively. And then of course, the next one then is how to fit your business into your life. You know, we're, we're helping you create a U-shaped business, but what is your U-shaped life? You know, what is it that you really, really, really want so that you can live the life that you really want. So when you get to the end of your days, whenever that may be, and we don't actually know when that's going to come, are you creating the life that you really want right now? You know, cause it's so powerful. And I am such a firm believer that we can create these businesses that support that life. And, but we have to know what that is and how we want to live and how we want to show up. And it's just really, really important to do that. So we've got our purpose as our guiding light there, you know, and then we really figure out um, what do we want. And I think throughout this year and through doing the show, part of that is figuring out what do I not want? What do I really like? What do I not like? All of those things help to sort of create the life that we want. And it is such, I think, a um, continual process. It's just not a one and done. Like I'm not going to sit down the end of December or the beginning of January and go, yeah, this is it. Like I have to be willing to be flexible and curious and notice feedback. And it, it really is, it's a growth journey. But as long as I'm aware of what's really important and I'm paying attention to the information, it's a pretty fun and exciting one. And then the last one that I have also hilarious to me, um, <laughs> um, is was really about building community, making an impact, and leaving a legacy. And I think I've probably talked about this pretty much my whole entire, almost feels like life, but definitely entrepreneurial, you know, business kind of life. And I I go back and forth and back and forth, but I think having a place where you feel like you belong, having a group of people that are like-minded and really gets you that place where you feel kind of seen, heard, understood, kind of safe to be who you are makes such a big difference. And I think we've seen that with, um, 
with our clients and the people that are like in our momentum group, the people that come to our workshops and here on the show, you know, it's that space where, oh, hey, hey, it's okay to be a beginner. It's okay to not necessarily know. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not want to make a million dollars. It's okay to want to be a little more simple. You know, all of those things, it's totally okay. And I think having a community where you can um, belong, but also be kind of this misfit, unique individual is really, really cool. And then being aware of, of the impact you want to make. And I think this goes all the way back to the power of your purpose and the life you want to create, because how we show up in the world on a daily um, basis makes a difference. We are making an impact whether we are aware of it or not. And so I think the more conscious we can be of the impact we're making with our life and our business, um, the more of a difference we're actually going to make. And then what is the legacy that we leave by doing that? And, I, you know, with the death of my dad, which is where this, this whole episode came from, um, I think that's just been really in my awareness, which could be why these are, um, are so impactful and important to me. And they're just like, oh my gosh, like, like Patty said this morning, because it's what you're all about. I'm like, oh my God, it's so true. It's so obvious. <laughs> Probably why they're my favorites. <laughs> and I think that that's kind of, kind of cool because uh, when I, I put mine together, it's like, it's what I'm all about. And it, it's, it's interesting how that bubbles up to the surface, even though it's like we go down these rabbit holes through creating content. And I think this is maybe one of the best arguments for doing this kind of thing, sharing your expertise and your perspective on a regular basis, like we do in our show, um, is that you, you surface all of the things that you're actually thinking of. And by having to explain your ideas to an audience, uh, you think about them more. You find out, you know, wow, this, this, this really left me feeling energized and this one I don't ever want to talk about again. Um, like you get, you gather that information and you make your, you know, you make your ideas and your messaging stronger as you do it. Um, and you, I think you get clearer and more, anchored in your why and your purpose as well so um, yeah so with all of this kind of introspection and how these kind of bubbled up and it's like oh look at that <laughs> here's a here's a bullet point list of you know three hints of what patty's kind of why and purpose in life in and three hints about what georgie's are it's like okay what's next um and you know, it's kind of like this idea of having a crystal ball. It's like, okay, what's going to happen next? What are we going to do with this? And um, <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going to be 12 months from now, but I do have a sense of where I'm going forward. And uh, so does Georgie. So I'll invite Georgie to go first on this one. Um, so given all of that, uh, what's what's next? What, what, are you, what are you doing with all that knowledge? Well, with all of this knowledge in my uh, very, you know, laid out, thought out, planning process like I do, um, I decided to start a community last week. <laughs> um, so yeah, so part of what I'll be doing in my my business on the side of what Patty and I do together is, is actually building a community um, that is a place for we're having conversations and being accepted and it's still it's, it's still very much a work in progress, but that's happening moving forward. Um, as well as I think really, really taking on more about, um, you know, helping people find their purpose and really kind of bringing, I think, the humanity back into the world a little bit, you know, having that, that space of, of acceptance and empathy and compassion and how do we build businesses that are just really human, you know, and I think, I mean, we talk about this all the time for sure, but I definitely see that as being an even bigger theme moving forward because I think it's really, really important, you know. And and someone made that comment yesterday in our um, in in our workshop, right? About it just seems so human, and I'm like, because that's what it's all about, you know. We are all human beings on this planet. We are all connected in some way or another. And I think one of my favorite highlights of 2020 was I have always said that um, you can make people feel like they matter. And I have faced a lot of opposition to that, that you can't make people feel anything. But I actually found scientific proof that you can. <laughs> so 
you know, I think bringing a little more of that into the world too, a little bit of that responsibility and ownership about how we show up matters and how do we want to show up. So, which goes back to what's the life that we want to build, what's the business that we want to build, and what's the responsibility that we're willing to take moving forward for that, and then creating a community around that that supports that. So, I kind of see probably moving forward, um, a lot of my topics will be around more of this kind of human thing and the life thing and more purpose stuff. And, you know, I got two weeks till just January to kind of figure it out, but... <laughs> That's sort of what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> For the people who've been listening into the show since we started, they'll be like, yeah, that changes how, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, it seems to make a difference. <laughs> I think this is one of the, like, you know, if I can offer a little bit of reassurance to to you if you happen to be um, the kind of person that's on a growth path and that you're constantly evolving and having big insights inside your head and and you know having this thought in the shower that goes this changes everything um, that change isn't always as evident to the people around you or outside you like they may have seen that in you before you did <laughs> It's like none of, none of what you've shared, Georgie, is a surprise for me. <laughs> well, you hear me every single day <laughs> and, <laughs> for hours on end. And when I share um, yeah. the stuff that I'm that I'm going to share, you'll be like, everybody's going to be like, yeah, yeah like, and? how Patty? It's like, yeah, more boxes and arrows. <laughs> well, actually, no, boxes and arrows got a little bit more rounded, but yeah. Uh, so <laughs> this is taking all of the you can tell right now the stark difference between um the georgie part of this and the patty part of this is that um uh, georgie's thing is is more of a people thing my thing is more of an ideas thing and uh ideas and transferring knowledge and like that's um, that's my purpose in life. That's my big why is I believe that all of the answers to the world's problems are locked up inside the heads of people. And I am on a mission to help them free them, to unleash, you know, their thoughts and their ideas um, and their smarty pants stuff out into the world. Like, how do you get your genius out of your, out of your head and into the world? That's my thing. Um, and this is what I've, this is my little drawings. This, this, this is part where I'm going next year is to draw stuff uh, because clearly I am an artist. Um, <laughs> but uh, when I started pulling together all of the ideas that I shared around this, you know, models and metaphors and marketing and program construction and all of this stuff, um, I arrive at this, this idea that, um, when we were talking about their clients, our clients, and we want to get inside the heads of the people that that um, are going to be our future clients, is that we need to see the world from their perspective. We need to see, put ourselves in their shoes, see what they see, think what they think, um, have access to what they're feeling, what they want, what they're struggling with, because when we speak to those things, we can get their attention and um, you know they'll be open to to listening to us, and from our future clients perspective it's kind of like they're trapped on this on this unhappy sad island here on the left of the screen um where where they have pain or they have a problem or life isn't exactly the way they want it or their business isn't exactly the way they want it um their relationships aren't the way they want it like there's something going on for them um that is that is unhappy and what they really want to do is they want to get over there to the sunshine island where things are better things are more wonderful or the pain goes away the struggle ends they get what they want right and this is you know, when we look at the, you know, the negative island, this is this future client thing, and it's seeing the situation as they see it, right? This is symptoms, their diagnosis, which may or may not be correct, their thoughts, their feelings, the solutions they've already thought of, the solutions they think they need, the information they have, the information they, you know, like, this is what you're working with. And this is the source of all of our marketing struggles is we don't see this for our client. Like, we don't get it. Um, and, and we're not 
connecting with them and the way that they see the world. Um, and then when we look at this happy island, that's the future situation as your future client wants it to be. That's the outcomes they envision. It's the results they want. It's their aspirations for their life. Some of these are big, some of these are small, but this is what we need to, to get a handle on is that um, this is kind of the zone of awareness for our future clients and we need to live here. We need to know this if we want to successfully reach them. Uh, so this is what they see. Okay, this is the big aha. Uh -huh. This looks like a couple of islands, but it's not. It's not water there, it's fog. Okay, what, and before I go there, <laughs> these, as your client sees it, and this is a big thing, they may not be correct, they may not be complete, they might think they need something that they, that isn't going to solve the problem. They may be lacking information, they may be using the wrong language, and for those of you who do coachy stuff, they may maybe talking about negative stuff, okay? But this is what they see. But this this line here is not water, it is fog. It is fog, there is fog. There is something below that fog line that they are not seeing, but you can. Da, 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 da. Um, this is, um, this is my big idea here, is that uh, there's two zones of awareness here. There's your, your future clients and then there's yours and you have way more awareness than they do, you have expertise that they don't have, you have perspective that they don't have, they are, you have solutions and knowledge that they don't have. Um, so under, you know, when you look, they have that kind of surface level problems they're aware of, underneath that are your, like your big idea about what's causing those problems, um, the solutions, the new information. Georgie and I were just talking about this the other day with this idea of adrenal fatigue. Um, adrenal fatigue is like a big idea. Um, the thing at the top that the client is experiencing is, is like tiredness and lack of energy, right? That's what they see. They don't see adrenal fatigue. The expert who knows about adrenal fatigue sees that. That's their big idea. You're tired <laughs> and lack energy because you have adrenal fatigue, right? But if you market adrenal fatigue, they've got no idea it exists, right? Uh, so there's your insights over here. And then this nifty little, you know, circles and arrows thing um, is your path to get there. And also, Sometimes you see additional benefits to working with you or solving a problem that they're not even aware of. How life can be so much more wonderful than they're even aware of. Um, and then this, this little line here, this is your offer. This is you know your signature system, it's your course, it's your program, it's your coaching, it's your consulting, it's your done for your service, it's whatever the heck you're selling. But you'll notice this thing is way below the zone of awareness. <laughs> so your marketing journey needs to look at this. Always start with what your clients understand. And there's an educational process where you have to bring them down, show them what's actually going on, and then talk about your solution. Um, and this is like, Georgie says, you could do a whole episode on this. And it's like, as it looks right now, I think I might be doing a whole year on this. Um, because this is what I see. This is within my zone of awareness, um, but it's not my client's zone of awareness. And this is where people get into trouble with their marketing all the time. And it's like um, my, my uh, repeated line last year was that this is a non-trivial undertaking. My repeated line this, this coming year is gonna be um, stay above the fog. <laughs> So that's a little glimpse into um, uh, some stuff that I'm going to be uh, expanding on in the new year. I'm also on a mission to uh, improve my ability to draw. Can you just repeat what one, two, three is? Someone just asked in the chat really quickly. This is your, your path for your marketing. It, like one is to, to always start your marketing. Like this is titles, topics, headlines, um, is to stop, to start it within the zone of awareness. It's like always, like if you're starting below the zone of awareness, they'd be tuned out. Um, item two is you, to you know explain, educate, what's the root cause? You're having this problem, here's why. And three is here's how, here's how to get out of there, right? This is a solution and the solution matches what you sell. So it's kind of like this one, two, three thing with the marketing um, with all of the various pieces, marketing materials and stuff that need to be uh, put together for that. Expect more on this in January. Lots and lots and it's lots February. and lots more. And March and April and May. <laughs> and March and April. And who knows, by April, I, I might have something completely different. It's like, 
<laughs> we don't know. There may be a palm tree on one of these islands and it's like, oh, I forgot this. Uh, anyhow, uh, to wrap us up for, um, for this show, a, a permission slip here is, um, is to go for what you really want, even if it means making big changes. This is the time of year that we get into this space. And um, I think especially looking at what Georgie talked about today, about, you know, what is your purpose? Why are you here? What legacy do you want to leave? What, it, what, what has meaning to you? Um, to consider that kind of stuff rather than um, putting it on hold. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I have for a wrap. For slide decks, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back in January. First, um, what day is this? Wednesday. First Wednesday in January. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What day is it? I know. Oh yeah, Wednesday. That's right. <laughs> I'm seeing that. I'm seeing the chat flash. I'm thinking that there might be some comments or yes, uh, questions, uh, observations. I like this. When I think of the episodes as songs on an album, I keep thinking about how amazing it is that I really, really liked every single one of your songs. In a way, they're all my favorites. All great hits. <laughs> These for different reasons. We've got we we we've got a raving fan. Kevin Kelly says we did a thousand and we're set. <laughs> That's right. We are rock stars in our own little world. <laughs> I will I will buy every one of your albums. I'll come to your live shows. <laughs> I've got the t-shirt. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, here's some top three episodes. Episode six on levels, uh, 16 uh, on creating a business that fits me, and the three C's of an effective sales conversation. Awesome. Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I learned I want to remain a solopreneur. I love what I do and don't ever want to scale and have to manage other people. Levels. So good. <laughs> levels was actually a really popular one. Yeah. Lots yeah. of people. Levels was big aha uh -huh for yeah. a lot of people yeah yeah for sure uh, just cruising here da -da 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 -da. Uh, i think those are the ones that you said okay what else we got in here um yeah some aren't sure what their favorite is that's good i wasn't either till this morning <laughs> or maybe i was actually <laughs> might just be an idea or a concept that you remember we hope that you remember something yes yes hopefully hopefully there was something that was that was useful um in, in what we what we have done because that's definitely definitely important that we're not just yapping for the sake of yapping yeah it's part of our purpose right exactly absolutely we are hoping yeah. that we are being helpful in some way yes yes yeah i think it's um there, there are so many ways to actually kind of bring your purpose to life. And I think part of that is definitely experimenting and finding much like you talk about in marketing, right? It's what are the ways that you like the best? What are the ways that really fit you? It's not necessarily the ones that other people say are the one. It's what really works for you. Yeah. That's probably our most used line um, ever. <laughs> I, I, could, I could say one thing, like my own personal kind of learning from doing this show um, and kind of thinking out loud in public, which is really what it is. It's like when you do a show at this kind of rapid pace, and we started off doing five shows a week, is that um, is it, it's often putting forward ideas that are not fully complete, fully per, uh, perfected. Um, and I have a tendency to want to... Um, write uh, like I write a lot of stuff in my journal and I share very little publicly and this has really accelerated that um, and it's the best decision I've ever made in my professional career to actually do this um, and I'm turning the volume up on that this coming year of just sharing more information um, like today sharing my half-baked yes. half-baked thoughts on this this diagram which has gone through several iterations already and i know it's not a hundred percent there but i'm you know here's a glimpse of what i'm thinking um and continuing to put that out there uh so if you happen to be and you are you know if you're listening to this you're into personal growth and development professional development you, you want to learn more is you have a lot of stuff that you can share and the more that you share about what you know the more you know like you'll realize like 
you'll flesh out your ideas, you'll find the little chinks in the, in the, you know, like there won't be perfectly shaped, there'll be like little dents and chinks and stuff that you have to fill in um, to round out. And uh, you'll grow faster by doing this, by sharing your expertise on a regular basis. And it's a very, um, it's a feel good way of marketing because it comes from a place of, of being of service and helping. And it's like, that's why we're here. Uh, is, is to do that to share this with the world um, in this in this little way but it but it, it's got lots of benefits beyond just the kind of marketing piece absolutely yeah it definitely helps to um, to be able to start to clarify thoughts I know that for me I might have like an idea and I'm like oh now I've got to put it in a slide deck okay and then, and sometimes, you know, even as we're talking about it, the thought kind of changes or you learn something more or someone will pop something into the chat and you, you gain a new perspective and it's like, oh yeah, hadn't thought about that. That's pretty awesome. You know, and the thought, and, and it starts to evolve, right? It's like, whoo. Right on the show. It's like, oh, I wish I would have done that this other way. I wish I would have explained it in this other way. You know, and it's like the episode that shall not be named that I didn't even want to publish because I'm like damn, that came out all wrong. What was in my head and what came out of my mouth, two different things, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It happens. <laughs> it happens. And you keep going. And only like four people watch that episode. So <laughs> until we said we weren't publishing it. <laughs> Don't draw attention to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think it's, and I think it's, that's actually a really good point too. Like we, we often think that we're going to start putting some stuff out there and oh my God, the whole world's going to see it. And what if I screw it up? <laughs> the reality is very few people actually see it, yep. you know? And if you get to, if you do screw it up, you actually get to be human and say, yeah, I don't think like that anymore. I got some new information, something, I have a, a new perspective in that moment. That's what I thought. And now it's a little bit different, yep. you know? So it's uh that's okay. And I think this show has really helped us for, for that. I think we have learned a lot about um, hacking our own system oh, for yeah. doing things and really doing things that in a way that just, that work for us. You know, like I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, I wonder if we would ever, like ever do this professionally polished video. And I just don't ever see it happening ever. <laughs> Like, it's just, it would never get done. Yeah. Like. <laughs> that's, and that's part, you know what, that's, this is part of, um, like, it's, it's that part of being human. It's, it's like, I think that this idea of you have to have things perfectly polished and, yeah. um, you know, flawless videos and perfect backgrounds. I mean, you can't have your dog's little raincoat behind you or, you know, see, you know, when, when my husband comes in and out the door, that kind of stuff, like that stuff should never um, be on camera and we should have a script and we should actually know what we're going to say before we show up. Um, all of that kind of stuff. It's when, when people do that and do that well, it sets kind of a, a standard of reality that's unattainable um, and it holds back uh, regular mortals from daring to show up and I think like this is you know it's always kind of been my my own little personal mission like even just going out um, to uh, a, a networking event or something like back when we used to be able to go to in-person things um, and I live near people um, is that I'd be like cool you know, I, I will be the worst dressed person here and nobody's going to feel bad about picking the wrong outfit because here I am. <laughs> it's just kind of like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be me and I'm going to be human. And uh, if I can be human, maybe other people can as well. Um, so, and I want to see that. I, I want to see more people, especially, um, you know, especially smarty pants people that pay a lot of attention to thinking and introspection and ideas and really have a lot of really good knowledge to share and who are maybe looking out there and go, how come all the good looking glossy people who have nothing to say are so successful? <laughs> we need more people of substance getting more of a platform. Um, oh, yes. So that's, uh, that's kind of. I would love to see more of that in 2021, actually. Like there are so many smart, intelligent people with 
incredible information to share. And I think it would be just, just amazing for those people to be able to share that information without this judgment of what it has to look like. And what if I don't say it just perfectly? And what if I stutter and stammer over my words? You know, I I think that would be incredible because there are so many ridiculously amazing people in this world that have messages that, that, that need to be, need to be heard. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about, you know, how can we just be a little more human, just a little more accepting where imagine if we created a world where everybody actually felt um, safe to show up as who they, who they are and to start voicing their thoughts and opinions and know that they're not going to just be completely condemned if they kind of change their mind a little bit. But it, because often it's through those conversations where we can gain um, some new perspective. So that would be awesome. Absolutely. So and, cool. uh, we just got a, a little note in the chat about the fact that we are um, delivering <laughs> a workshop in uh, 17 minutes. And yes, we will be signing off a couple minutes early as well yes. uh, so that, that we can. Uh, change rooms and change slide decks <laughs> get ready to go <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, yes and I think many of you here are are joining us uh, over there which is fantastic and if you're not you can you can still join us over there um, what's the best way for them to do that what's the best way for them to do that um, probably to grab the uh, the link off the website Oh, perfect. Of course, if you're watching, if you're watching this in, in the future on the video, well, actually, if you're watching this in the future on the video, uh, you can get there, uh, you can get there from here. Uh, but we have, I'm just going to pop the link into the chat because you perfect. can sign up and get the link and show up and you don't have to do, we're on, um, we're on session three, but session three does not require sessions one and two be, to be complete. Exactly. Because we're just so clever that way. Um, oh, let's send it to everybody. And, uh, there's a link about the there's a link about the workshop and um, and with that, have a uh, um, a wonderful and amazing uh, end of the year um, holidays if you're celebrating them, and uh, we will see you back here in January. Uh, same bad time. Same bad channel. <laughs> Bye for Bye. now. <laughs>